guys and welcome back to headphones neil reviews i'm your host as always headphones neil bringing you my latest batch of reviews and updates and that sort of stuff so i do have a big list of reviews to get through for everyone this week so i'm gonna jump right into it it's gonna be generally split up into three parts with the first part being my um, movie and TV show reviews and updates. The second part is going to be my Android tip related to another thing I got a chance to do this week. And then I'm going to round it out with my video game review updates. So to start it off, something that I started last week was to sh um, share the cover image background information to patrons. And then um, <clears throat> it'll be available on the public feed for the podcast there. But I thought I would also share that update in the episode itself. <clears throat> and it's going to be when I do an AI generated thing, a summary of the prompt I used. If it's a photoshopped um, image, then I'm going to just say that, you know, because a collection of photoshopped images that I created. So in this case, the cover image is uh, I used it or I created the cover image using the prompt in Google's Gemini for, to generate an image of Snoopy as a Dracula on a Viking boat in hell in space to encompass everything that is in the episode. So this episode is going to essentially cover all those items in the prompt. So to start it off, I had a chance to watch The Last Voyage of the Demeter. It's the movie that was released in 2023 um, that's built around the chapter or the few pages in the Bram Stoker novel um, Dracula where we learn and get a more visualized idea of what happened on the boat as Dracula is being transported from Transylvania to London or England wherever and overall it was a very good movie I liked the acting uh, Liam Cunningham was good I liked the doctor guy his relationship um, and bond that he formed with Liam Cunningham's son and all of that and then the revelations of how they presented Dracula were good to the point where the only thing I felt like it was missing was at the end of the film where we get a side view of Dracula, but he's kind of left in the shadows, but it would have been nice if they did a uh, deep fake of um, Bela Lugosi or had a stand in double of a guy who kind of looks like him and, um, you know, have the cape over his face and things like that to cover him up, but kind of ha actually show his face to tie him in, tie this film into the 19. 31 film but that doesn't take away from the film itself that overall it was good it was you know think of it like master and commander but with um dracula and more of a period piece for the time so overall very well done i really enjoyed it and i definitely worth all right de definitely recommend watching it um on a related note i had a chance to watch a few more episodes of vikings season six i didn't get too far into it just because of timing and other stuff that i watched but overall still good i like the russian viking stuff that's going on and um i'm still working my way through it a couple episodes a week or so at least so um all of those back and forth you know bjorn as king of kattegat and rescuing um the other king dude um that got captured and then um Ivar with the Russians, all of that interaction is going well. I'm really enjoying it. Um, in other stuff that I watched, we had the season three premiere for Star Wars The Bad Batch. So I did get a chance to watch the first three episodes and overall I enjoyed them quite a bit. The first episode and the third episode I liked the best. They tied directly into each other very well. Um, but the first episode was probably the slowest of the three. The second one was kind of a good episode just in that we get an update on Wrecker and Hunter. Um, and they're trying to still find out what happened to Omega. Um, the Omega um, crosshair dynamic was really good. We get to see their escape in the third episode. The arrival of the Emperor throws a little bit of a wrench in the plan, but we also get a little bit of a look of more into the workings of the Empire. So all of that stuff was very good. And then, you know, the 
Um, they brought up Project Necromancer, which I think all of that was related to the Emperor's project of cloning himself. They didn't overtly bring that up, and I haven't had a chance to look into Project Necromancer. So, um, that, with that being said, I am going to look that up too, but overall, that whole stuff was good. So the third episode is probably the best of the three. So if you watch nothing else, watch the third episode. It's a good encompassing of everything. Um, the first episode kind of sets us up for the Omega um, Hunter dynamic. And then the second episode is like, yeah, no, we haven't forgotten about or the Omega Crosshair dynamic. And then the second episode is more of, yeah, no, we haven't forgotten about Hunter and Wrecker. So here's what they're up to and um, what they're trying to do to find, find out where Omega went. So that's all there is for that part. So next up is the Android uh, tip and how it's related to my recent trip to Knott's Berry Farm. So earlier this week, I had a chance to visit Knott's Berry Farm, first trip of the year uh, with the um, season pass and all of that. Wanted to check out the peanut celebration, the new prestige lounge, and just have a generally relaxed day. And I got to thinking that this would be a good time to practice a tool in Google Photos that I really like quite a bit called Magic Eraser. So the basic premise of the tool is that let's say you have a picture where you have a light pole that you want to get rid of or someone photobombs your picture or you see a few people and objects in the background you want to get rid of. Magic Eraser does exactly that. It takes the surrounding parts of the image of the thing you want to remove and removes the actual object and blends it, that missing item uh, very well into the background so as if it was not there to begin with so overall this is a very powerful tool for things like that you know light poles people certain objects and things like that um, and a good place to test that is an amusement park where you have lots of different people you might have a certain like a trash can or a random bit of thing something in your picture that you want to get rid of so magic eraser for the most part does a very good job of doing things like that it does have a little bit of an issue when you have you know people that blend into bushes or too many things close together too many moving objects too much noise and things like that so you do have to take things like that into consideration but if you have individual people and your image is good sharp enough then you can easily remove just about anything um the benefit of this though is that while magic eraser was generally used uh, here or created for you know people and things like that you can use it for just about anything so let's say you're um, you have an awning in a picture and you don't like how that looks in your picture you can get rid of the entire awning and it'll blend it in the blend of you know the building so that it looks like that awning was never there um if you took a picture and you have too much stuff around the border you can get rid of things like that <coughs> if you took a picture of you know like for me you know with a roller coaster and then there's trees on the side but you realize that there was a branch on the top of the picture that doesn't really fit well with the picture you can get rid of that and it'll blend it into the sky as if that was never there so magic eraser is a very powerful tool to get rid of objects people um if you see garbage on the ground if there's an extra shadow that you don't want to see you can do that if there's a bird in the sky that doesn't really fit there or it makes it look worse then you can get rid of that so magic eraser is a very powerful tool that's part of google photos as far as i know it is only a part of um I think it should work on Android and iOS, but I've only tested it on Android, so um, I can't give any feedback on the iOS portion, but on Android, it's a very powerful tool to clean up pictures. So if you want to get rid of all the other people in your photo and give yourself, you know, a portrait of whatever, um, like the people in your photo, just have it focus on them, you can just as easily do that. So I definitely recommend using it, getting a Google One subscription to you try Magic Eraser. And it can use, be used for just about anything. So even when you see the cover images on my gameplay videos up on YouTube, you can take a screenshot in a video game and um, erase out things you don't want to see. So if you have um, NPCs, if you see residual artifacts in certain areas if you want to get rid of chairs or tables or things that don't fit or even like ui elements like controls and buttons and toggles and things like that 
you can get rid of stuff like that. So even for things like my recent Doom gameplay, if you take a screenshot with the fist or a gun in the picture, you can just as easily get rid of the weapon and have a picture that erases it com completely, blends it in with the ground, and you now have a photo which um, erases elements like that. So even if you want to get have screenshots without enemies or certain visual elements, then you can just as easily remove things like that. So that's why I recommend Magic Eraser as a very good tool from Google. It was originally just a pixel only feature, but they integrated it into Google Photos to make it available for anyone with a Google One subscription to use. Um, now, as far as the trip to Knott's, it was a, the same, as I mentioned, it was just a simple day to visit the park. It was a generally quiet day, so not too many crowds or lines or anything like that. And it was a good time to take some pictures because it was after a recent rainstorm in Southern California. So the uh, skies were very clear, they were very blue. So in the show notes for this episode, I'll have a link to the photo gallery and the video gallery so you can check out some of those pictures and see just how good they came out. It provides for very clear, dramatic uh, photos. Um, and like I said, I mean, and then the plants got watered very well, so you have a lot of plants in the area as well. So definitely worth checking out. So uh, that's, there's not really much to say there. It was kind of an aimless afternoon at the park, mostly for photography and also practice using the Magic Eraser tool. So with that, I'm going to jump into the last portion of the episode in the form of some video game updates. All right, so for the first video game update that I wanted to give, I had a chance to finish playing Doom Delta, which is a mod for Doom 1 and 2 that incorporates some of the beta elements of the game into the original games. So in my gameplay, I did play Doom 1 and it incorporates some of the original weapon elements like a machine gun that's very reminiscent of the one from Wolfenstein 3D. It adds an animation to the railgun that it has a spin up effect, so it doesn't do a full speed right off the bat. It actually spins up to full speed. Um, it allows for different um, lost soul animations, so rather than the dark skull with the flame, it's more of a whitish skull. Um, it adds this flying um, mother demon type of character, so it's not really as um, hashed out as that mother demon from Doom 64, but something along those lines. Um, and then various other elements like the armor and um, power-ups and backpacks and things are not as fully hashed out as the final version, so you can kind of see where they made improvements there. The animation for the plasma gun isn't as refined as the final version, so you can see how certain things were left the same, like the imp animation is the same, but its fireball is more hashed out in the final version than the beta version or the delta version, so overall it does add an interesting element because you get some new um, weapons like the machine gun and also like there's a, uh, this little red handish thing that's like a the soul cube kind of thing that releases souls to um, kill off enemies so overall it does add an interesting element to the gameplay for the game to the point where it does seem um, so you can see kind of where they were going with it but it would have been one of those things in um, in retrospect where it would have been nice in Doom 1 now where the final boss was a cyber demon in Doom 2 if they had made the spider mastermind the final boss and then in make a Doom 3 where they make the icon of sin the final boss so kind of spread it out over three games so you actually build up to it so it's one of those things where by having the cyber demon and spider mastermind in one game it kind of pushes them into a corner as far as what kind of um, enemies they can have or what kind of final bosses they could have to the point where even like having the um, mother demon in Doom 64 would have been a nice Doom 3 um, game and they could have even like um, branded it like that like for the Nintendo 64 is Doom 64 but for everyone else make it Doom 3 or you just make it Doom 64 for everybody and it's the actual spiritual successor to Doom 1 and through 1 and 2 but they improved some of the visual elements the 3D elements of it smooth it out a little bit like they did for the N64 or even bring in additional levels that they couldn't put into Doom 64 into Doom 3 and make it like um, 
the Ultimate Doom 3 or the Ultimate Doom 64 or something like that. But overall, it was a fun game. The game does seem a little bit overpowered because when you have the character like the Doom guy who can use any weapon and then you have the machine gun, rail gun, plasma gun and all of that, um, the game is that much easier. And then with the weapons like the BFG, it only takes a couple of good shots to kill off the cyber demon and then a few shots to kill off the spider mastermind. Whereas in the final version of Doom 1, you do have to stra um, strategize, or sorry, the plasma gun for the cyber demon, but you do have to strategize a little bit more in the final Doom because, you know, your um, BFG 9000 um, only gets um, a few, you know, it's one shot for a, a heavier shot and then you only have limited ammo for the plasma gun and um, um, your rocket launcher isn't as fast as the cyber demons, for example, and things like that. So uh, you can see how they kind of tone down the weapon side of it so that they can make so they can hash out the weapons that they are including but on the flip side it feels like they could have included some of those elements into doom 2 instead of just the um super shotgun and faster doors they could have done something like the super shotgun and the bfg 9000 beta animation for how it shoots off all those different fire like uh, plasma balls make that an improvement in doom 2 over doom 1 where the first one was you know just one shot at a time the doom 2 bfg 9000 is that much more powerful so um not really a good or bad thing either way just i thought it was one of those things that would have been nice in retrospect but in any case doom delta is definitely a fun mod for doom and it does change a little bit of the interactions with your environment by having these different weapons the actual in-game objects and sprites and stuff are more or less the same, so not too much different there. It's just how you play the game now with these different weapons. So with that being said, the next gameplay that I have going is Knights of the Old Republic. So in this case, the gameplay is going to be based around um, the character Tare Vizsla, which was the first Mandalorian in Star Wars history to also be a Jedi. So I kind of wanted to build this character as a soldier and a Jedi guardian, kind of like what his um, profile page is. Um, he has abilities like force, push, and pull, and heal, and run, and things like that. So his um, force powers are going to be relatively basic, but um, it's one of those things where he is a very Revan-like character in most ways, except that he's a Mandalorian. So. It's one of those things that will make it easy to to play the game as if um, you're a Mandalorian player. So um, the first couple of gameplays are already up. I'm still on Terrace as of this recording, um, but just take into account that I'm playing as a Mandalorian rather than a Republic officer. Um, I am playing with the usual mods, so Jedi from the start, Easy Pazak, and Easy Swoop Racing, but in this case I'm also using the No Force Restrictions mod, which allows you to use any force power with any armor so that I can use some of the um, better, um, heavier armors with force powers, so I can have a more Mandalorian-like character who is using the force. I am hoping to get, I think it's Exar Kun's armor if I remember right. Um, which didn't allow you to use force powers by default, but with this mod I'm hoping to be able to do something like, like that. So um, that'll be once I get there by the time I get to. I think it's on Dantooine when the armor shows up, but regardless of where it shows up, the, that's the plan is to try that out and to use the best armor possible for the character. But um, that's kind of where I'm going with that. So with each episode going forward, I'll kind of give an update with where I'm at. But so far it's just the usual Terra's first planet gameplay, so working my way through the dueling ring, the upper, lower, and under cities, and just taking care of those various missions to get off the planet. So with that being said, that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on the social media posts. All the links are up on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. All the gameplay videos are up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pateln01, along with now some more YouTube shorts and all the usual video stuff that I'm uploading. And of course, you can get early access to the show um, and add a free version of it and all that stuff up on the Patreon at patreon.com slash 
Italian Zero One. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.